This episode of Cognitive Dissonance is brought to you by our patrons. You fucking rock. You know, I said before that Ted Cruz, that his body was composed entirely out of queso. But lately here, with all this uh, thing going around about his pornography habit, maybe he might have a little mild sauce. I'm just saying. See you, fellas. Hey, this is Adam from Tennessee. Yeah, I just, I couldn't help but think that when they were talking about how the uh, 9-11 attacks were caused by, you know, homosexuality and all that bullshit. And they were like, you need to repent. And not only did we not repent, but we, you know, legalized gay marriage nationwide. And we elected a Kenyan communist Muslim to be our president. So... I just think it's weird that we didn't get attacked again after that. Be advised that this show is not for children, the faint of heart, or the easily offended. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Recording live from Glory Hole Studios in Chicago, this is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way, we bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's skeptical, it's political, and there is no welcome mat. This is episode 379 of Cognitive Dissonance. And Cecil... Mm -hmm. We just did uh, two live stream chunky chicken pieces in a row. Yeah. Yeah. We're starting a trend, man. We're using that live stream. We're going to try to do it once in a while. A little can. bit. If we can. We'll, we'll get, yeah. maybe push out a story on Thursday nights. Um, we don't have a time, though. That's no. the problem is the time. Catch as catch can. And next week, since we're probably going to have an in-studio guest, we probably won't do it. But um, but when we when it's just us and there's not you know a, a time frame... We trying might, to use it more than on yeah, more more, more than it. we have yeah, in the past, exactly. yeah. Because we right. just we, it's one of those things we just forget to ha to do, and it normally takes a whole day to schedule. Like you're just like, oh, we got to schedule around it. We got to right. do all this stuff. We got to you got to kind of find special stories. But we figured we would try to throw a couple of stories that we're just not gonna we weren't gonna actually do up right. there. Um, and so they turned out good. They turned out fun. So the latest stream is gonna be on Facebook. I'll edit the current one so that um when I post it to YouTube, so it actually works. works. <laughs> because for the first three minutes or so, there's no audio. Like we just we couldn't well, we we messed up. There was a there was a, a button we have to flip. And then once we flipped it, still was no audio. But you fixed it by unplugging, unplugging the headphone it. jack? Yeah. yeah, so because I what? Yeah. Like the metal wasn't connecting the metal. Yeah. I don't know. Before in the headphone jack. I'm still mad about I that. I can tell. It doesn't make I any sense, Cecil. Yeah, I can it does tell. not make any sense. I'm still very wounded. I it. am. I am. This is like right in my heart space. This is this is going to bother me all night. But uh, let's move on. Let's talk about some shit that actually might matter. This is from the ACLU's website. Same-sex couples are being turned away from becoming foster and adoptive parents in Michigan. So we're suing. Um, you know, this is, this is interesting because this is not... This is from the ACLU's website. So like this is a story like... From their from, from the guys sure. that are sort yeah, of yeah. doing it, like yeah. who are engaged in the transaction, yeah. um, and this is a topic you and I have talked about before. Yeah, many times. Yeah, many many times. Um, and it occurs to me, like, how fucking bleak is your life if you are in need of adoptive parents in Michigan? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I guess that's true. Like yeah. in Michigan, yeah, you're like some fucking like uh, orphan in Flint. Oh. Like I would yeah, like might as well just drink the water at that point. So uh, the, the question I have about the story is like, what pair of animals would you not accept as your yeah. parents <laughs> as an orphan in exactly. Michigan? Right. All like these people raised by radioactive wolves. Like, up there. like a couple of scorpions yeah, could show up matter. and they'd be like, yeah, here they carry They carry doesn't their young on their matter. back. Doesn't it's fine. To, like their back is it does, like it could be raised by anything. Yeah. By anything. Yeah. As long as you leave Michigan. <laughs> I feel like that should be conditional on, on acceptance here. It's like, as long as you leave 
Michigan, you'll give this kid a better home. It doesn't matter if you're a murderous chimpanzee. Like if you're gonna rip the fucking kid's face right off and eat it. You know, there's thirteen thousand kids that they mentioned in this article. Thirteen thousand kids in the Michigan yep. foster care system. That's amazing. It's a lot of fucking kids. I didn't think there was 13,000 people in Michigan. No, none of them are there of their own volition. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. It's Michigan it's is like, basically like a prison state. Yeah, it's exactly. the Alcatraz it's, it's, of America. It's the New York escape from New York. <laughs> it's like that. It's just a big barbed wire around it. And it's, you just get a, you get air dropped in like the best you can as like, a fetus. Just and then, <laughs> uh, we should use a parachute. For those fetuses. The crazy thing is that these child these child placement agencies are religious because yeah. they're the ones that are the ones that are refusing, right? So right. it's it's not that the state has anything. They just use these child placement services to find homes for these children. And the child placement agencies are the ones that these prospective couples are calling up, the same right. sex couples, and saying, hey, I, I'd really like to be. Yeah, how a much parent. is a baby? Give yeah. me sell buy. You can you buy them just like on layaway, just get a part at a time, or is that? There was I saw a, a video about. There was that. a movie called Cheaper by the Dozen. I remember. <laughs> so maybe they throw an extra in, like a baker's dozen. But you have to be called Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. Oh yeah, think, there you or go. Whatever her name is, June yeah. Baker. I don't now, know what her is her name now? June Bug. I think. Oh that's God, that's horrifying. If you Lori. beat your foster kids, do you get a punch card for more? Punch like, card, yeah, I like that. That's right? nice. Uh -huh. I like that. Pretty punny. Yeah, pretty, pretty punny. Good. There you go. Good. I want to say one of the things that I I was I, I sort of took a look at, because what their argument, I think, is, is that LGBT people don't, they don't have, uh, they don't have the same skill set or they're not as good, right? So I, I found an article that listed the Columbia Law School and the Columbia Law School there's a quote from their website that says, we identified 79 scholarly articles that met our criteria for adding to knowledge about the well-being of children with gay and lesbian parents. Of those studies, 75 concluded that, child, uh, that children of gay or lesbian parents fare no worse than other children. While many of the sample sizes were small and some of the studies lacked control group, researchers regard these studies as providing the best available knowledge about child adjustment, and we do not view large representative sample as essential. We identified four studies concluding that children of gay or lesbian parents face added disadvantages since all four took their samples from children who endured family breakups, a cohort known to face added risks. These studies have been criticized by many scholars as unreliable assessments of the well-being of LGB-headed households. Taken together, this research forms an overwhelming scholarly consensus based on over three decades of peer-reviewed research that having gay or lesbian parents doesn't matter. Okay, hold on, hold on. Counterpoint. Mm. So that was a good point, sure, right? Yeah, absolutely. I can't, I can't. Absolutely. Deny. Scholarly consensus. Right. But what if they see two guys kissing? But what, what does that do, though? It makes, it makes other people who aren't in that house feel weird that's, in their pants. Right. That's the only way I can, because, right. Because tell, <laughs> Nobody I, I gotta ask you this question. Cause yeah. this is, this is the thing that, that yeah. this is the, this is the real heart of the matter. Yeah. They think that if you're, I mean, this is what it really boils down to. If you come from an LGBT household, you're going to then be LGBT. That's what they, that's what they don't want. They yeah, don't want. Well, but I think there's more to it. I think they also think that you'll be molested because yeah. a lot of these idiots, they think the pedophilia thing, they, they, yeah, but right. let's just go with the one that you'll, that you'll then be gay or right. you'll teach yeah. your kids to be gay. Mm -hmm. I might've had one, one conversation with my parents about sex. I, and then, my dad never gave me any pointers. Did you ever walk in saying. on him? My dad was never like, my dad was never like, <laughs> so you want to spread it like this and you want to tongue this area. My dad was never like that. My dad was not, my dad was just like, there be monsters down. <laughs> that was the extent of our conversation. Like my dad was just like, "Be careful to wrap it up." Like that was what my dad's. I didn't comment. even get my that. Dad, my dad's comment was, "Be careful to wrap it up. You don't want to be a dad when you're young." That my, was that was the entirety of the comment. We had one. I remember we had one one birds and the bees conversation when I was maybe eight or nine because I, I you know the show Facts of Life. Yeah. Well, I, I wondered what it referred you take to. Take the good. You take the bad. And I asked my you take dad. Them both. There you have. Mm. A Facts weird, yeah. odd conversation with your dad. So I, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. So I, I asked my dad, I was like, hey. Hey, dad. What are the facts of life? What are the facts of life? I was referring to the TV show. Sure, he didn't. He started drawing me pictures of fucking Pee -pees. bits and bobs. 
And I was like, and this is not JJ's how this was supposed to go. Yeah. So, and that was the, and that was eight or nine. It had nothing to do with having sex. You're just like, so this is what women have a penis. Right. And women have a vagina, right? Be afraid of the vagina. Yeah, sure. That was the only sex conversation I ever had in my life with my dad. The weirdest part is that he put on the 1812 overture when he was drawing them. Like Why is that, that weird? weird? <laughs> is there some better music for that? What do you put on? Yeah. I put on the Imperial March. I find the cannon dun, blast to be dun, inspiring. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> well, I, I thought that the that the point of the church was to worship God and the boy fucking was just incidental. No, it's just the other way around. The point of the church is the boy fucking. All the other stuff is just busy work. This story is from the independent.co.uk. Philippe Barbarian. <laughs> Sorry, that's not how it's pronounced. Philip the Barbarian. Philippe? Philippe. Bar Barbarossa. Bar 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 <laughs> you just got to give up. That's how you pronounce all French things. Give up mid-word. So you say, Philippe Barbarossa. And then you just, that's it. You just give up. We should get Eli to pronounce yeah. it. He does a really great job <laughs> with the does French. Eli a good job with that. And not Listen Noah. to or the he. citation needed that we just came out, because Eli does a lot of French pronunciations in that. Kills it. Uh, French Cardinal to face trial for not reporting child abuse. Six other priests have also been summoned to court. If only there was some way to prevent this. Yeah. If only Cecil. It's a real, it is a tragedy, right? It it's, a, it's a tragedy that these it, cripplingly ineffective, shitty old men have to be summoned to court to face this these kinds of accusations. If only they could have done something ahead of time. Yeah. What could they have done? Yeah. So confusing. Maybe they could have reported child abuse. What's What's good though that in in France that's something that you can go to court for, right? And right? that is that is good. And yeah. I looked it up, and it says, I, and this is a quote from uh, one of the. I looked up a thing that was like a clergy project that talked about um, what the rights of the clergy are when they hear about sexual abuse. Okay, and this is a quote from it: Twenty eight states and Guam currently include members of the clergy among those professionals specifically mandated by law to report known or suspected instance of child abuse or neglect. So 28 states. That's, that's not enough. Right? Right? Isn't that, that's the shock. Just over part. half? Yeah. yeah. I, I, here's, I don't understand. I genuinely, I genuinely do not understand the rationale. No, there, I, I can't imagine how anybody doesn't immediately say, yeah, you should have to report that right away. Yeah. What if it were my kid? Yeah. Like, how do you, like, mo like, like these lawmakers are by and large family people, sure. right? Because yeah. they have to sell the fact that they're family people to get, right. to get elected. you know, elected. Yeah. Like yeah. it's part of, they have to, yeah. even if they don't want kids, they have to fucking show them off sure. anyway. They have to go but, to the abortion mill and, and just pick some up. Yeah. yeah. Just, fucking I mean, the dead ones, weekend gotta, at babies. Just gotta just powder them <laughs> the right way. <laughs> they make better finger puppets. Hello, I am a little baby. What they do is you just take them away from all the gay people that had them. They just, they just swipe them from all the gay people that had them naturally. Yeah. Swipe or no swipe. It's yeah. a bad door of the Explorer joke. But like, seriously, like what, what rationale could you possibly use to be like, I mean, if you told a priest you were fucking the kid, then it's fine. I mean, like, I don't have to say anything. We don't want to make it weird for the priest. Sure. And in this case, the priest is covering up for another priest. Right. It means covering up for another. Which which is endemic yeah. to the whole system in the Catholic mm -hmm. Church. It's like, it's why these things, it's why these perpetuated for so long. Yeah, it's because these sure. guys were like, I'm going to tell on you if you don't tell on me. Glory hole in extremely long black cock. I like this story a lot. It's from the Omaha World Herald. Parish removes priest who asked middle school students during confession if they masturbated or watched porn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They all did. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Let right? me just go down. Like, yeah. I, I left. I was like, yeah, 100% of them. Yeah. <laughs> 100% of them. <laughs> yeah. of, yeah. They're in the confessional jerking off yeah. to porn right, right now. now. Right now. They're so happy that, that it's an enclosed private space. <laughs> As an eighth grade boy, if you put me in any enclosed private space for a longer period yeah. than three seconds, yeah. my pants have fucking disintegrated. Yeah. Yeah. They have, I, they're just gone. They're yeah. gone. I just, I've, I've thrown them away. I've, I've removed them so hard. I never owned them. That's <laughs> the priest is like, uh, okay. So how many times you masturbated? 20, 25. 
26, 26, <laughs> 26, 27, <laughs> 28. Right. And the brace is just like, do I hear 28, 20, 29, 30, 30, 30, 30, 40, 41, 44, 45, 46. <laughs> <laughs> a 13-year-old boy? Oh, Are you kidding me? Yeah. A 13-year-old boy will rub a fucking twofer out <laughs> during a fucking commercial break. <laughs> There's a quote from this that I think is that I think suffers from phrasing. Okay. All right. I think he was trying to get them to really discern and be in touch <laughs> with any sinful behavior they, they had, McNeil said. So I think it was the case of from what we know right now. The case of trying to be too helpful. <laughs> <laughs> too helpful? What, was he going to fucking jerk him off himself? <laughs> no, you're doing it wrong, kid. But, you know, I actually I actually am not 100% sure, to be perfectly honest, why that's inappropriate for a priest, right? Priests have always moralized about sure, sex. Yeah, and they've right. always moralized about masturbation. And, they, and they've, I mean... I, I think that as long as there's been porn, they've moralized about that sure. too. I wonder if he's quizzing them about what video they were watching. Though. Well, I guess that's the only way that I feel like this would be out of line. I think it's ridiculous, but is it out of line with their historical actions sure, at all? Right. I, I'm not sure that it is unless they're like, so, uh, so what can you go? Can you, uh, let me see the video. Yeah. Can you go real slow and tell me exactly yeah, right. what you did? Show me where you finished. Yeah. <laughs> did you fast forward to the end? So you finished it? At the, no. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to introduce you to this. This is Handy. Okay. <laughs> he's a stuffed animal. Are you like a compilations he's guy? Like, Are you like a whole those, video guy? He's got one of those hamburger hands for the hamburger <laughs> helper. And it's just covered with Jergens with a hole cut in it. <laughs> these, these idiots don't need to be talking to kids about sex and sexuality. They're not yeah. trained. No. First of all, they don't know anything about human sexuality. They don't yeah. fuck. Exactly. Right? Yeah. They don't enter into long-term romantic relationships yeah. with other human beings. Right? They don't know. They don't enter into short-term romantic relationship. They don't know anything about what all, they're talking of about. Of all the things that they should know about, jerking off would be at the top of the list. Yeah, you, you would think right? that they would be fucking you would think that varsity would be like, level. Be like, right? no, okay, let me tell you. Okay, so you're going to get a twofer. Here's how you do it. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to tell you. They would <laughs> right. know all the secrets. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, here's how you fucking cash your porn so your loading times are shorter. <laughs> <laughs> They're like the Jedi fucking masters of this shit. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Amateur. You getting pop-ups still? Let me get in here. Yeah. Take care of this. Take care of this out. Right. Now, yeah. You fucking Yoda's sitting on the ground. <laughs> Jerk off, in, you will. It's covered in, in slime. <laughs> Different colored slime. Right. You know. I mean, these people are, they truly are in the numerology. It's their religion. All right. This is from Right Wing Watch. Uh, Jonathan Kahn, 9-11 and the Lewinsky scandal. We're back at the Lewinsky scandal. We are, Tom. We We're are. foretold by the Bible. I, I actually grabbed this because uh, haven't we forgotten about the Lewinsky scandal? <laughs> Evidently not. Are we not done with yeah, that? Evidently like, not. I feel like he finished. Yeah. <laughs> hey, now. It's over. Hey, now. Right? He sure did. Man. Here we go. He should have come in her mouth. He wouldn't have had any of these fucking problems. How long was Bill Clinton on the national stage? He, he began and he was elected governor in 1979. Right. That's the beginning of his rise. He lasted until 2001, the end. Of that's a long time to last, by the Man, way. Man, that's Ooh, fucking that's stamina. A, that's some fucking like Kama Sutra level shit. There right comes there. a point where nobody's even having any fun anymore. Exactly. Though. You're just yeah, like, your balls are fucking, they're not, they're not even blue. They're Jesus. like past blue, whatever color. Yeah, start a fire in that go, thing. Go right to plaid or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. A fluorescent. You're like Survivor, man. Yeah. It's, just, it's like. I want to point out that he's saying Clinton's rise started in 1979, but Clinton was, he, he actually tried to run against the incumbent governor in 74. So did his rise happen before then? I don't know. Maybe it's just convenient that we're picking the state. He was actually elected to office. He was the attorney general, the attorney general in, in 1976, but he was elected to governor in 1978, but he's using his inauguration day as, as, the, day, as the start right? for his numerology. For his, right. Because that's the that's where it's right. going to work. But it's actually, it turns out that it's because because their numerology doesn't work unless you fudge the numbers a yeah. little. Which is really easy to do when somebody's been alive for a long sure. time. Right? And then you could just add a point, just say, oh, well, this is when they came yeah, into power. Right. This is their rise. Of his presidency. Aye. That's 22 years. Open up the Bible and open up and it says Ahab, son of Omri, reigned in Samaria for a period of 22 years. Oh, my God. The number 22 has appeared. That's amazing. Ah! 
<laughs> one time in the Bible, only once, I'm yeah. sure. Twenty. Gibble de Gob raid yeah. over the fucking lands of Himity Hamity for fucking twenty two years. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> and I'm I'm gonna. Like, listen to that gibberish. I know gibberish I know. ass garbage. That who is, that who is believes some... this stuff? <laughs> Assholes. Clinton follows the same template of Ahab, and the same thing in, in every way. Mm-hmm. What's he gonna get eaten by a whale? <laughs> gonna lose a leg he did he did wind up spearing oh uh, you know what oh, i mean like uh, there. Maybe something in a blowhole at a certain point <laughs> so i think there is you know again he should yeah. internal yeah, and then exactly. you're, there's no evidence it's no evidence yeah now that there's also a scandal it's also the, the reign of ahab just known for a scandal it's yeah. scand- what with a scandal for ahab was he was shoving kosher Cigars up someone's twat. Was that what <laughs> Ahab did? Of Naboth and the vineyard. Yeah. Well, the Clinton years. Oh, hold on a second. Wait. They did the what? The Visigoths went to the vineyard. I Scandal think. of Naboth and the vineyard. Yeah. Well, the Clinton years, of course, were also I known like for how- scandal. Oh, he's like, I yeah. Like how, oh. I like how Power Hours is like, Man. oh, yeah, that fucking oh. vineyard scandal. Jeez. Na- oh, God. Jesus. That was ridiculous. Huh? Yeah. Oh. I remember when that I was uncomfortable. Yeah. Just getting into my third yeah. grandkid or fucking whatever. <laughs> When Naboth was in the vineyard. Yeah, or yeah. Fucking who was in the kitchen with Dinah? <laughs> you fucking kidding me? Known for a scandal and scandals. And the key one was the Lewinsky scandal. He was impeached. That's true. Well, when did the scandal of Ahab and Jehovah, when did it, when was it exposed? It was exposed in the 19th year of the king. So what happens if we take the beginning, 1979 of Bill Clinton's rise, right. give 19 years, it takes us to the year 1998. But he wasn't the president for 19 years. He was he was only the president for I, eight years. I thought we were talking about 22 years. No, he's saying, when did the scandal happen? Well, you have to go back to the 19 years ago from when oh, the scandal for fuck's happened. Sake. Well, so if the scandal happens 19 years into his quote unquote rise, well, his rise was when he became governor. That's when he became king. The fucking, yeah, our king is the fucking governor of Arkansas. That's our king. king. Get the fuck out of here. That guy would have to, that guy rides a pig to work. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> guy ain't my king. 1998 is the year of the exposing of the scandal. And in fact, he was sworn in in January. So January 1998 is the actual month that it broke loose. And I'll, I'll give you some more things. I, mean, I know we can just. Really? I'll give you some more things. I'll make up some more shit. Hold on so a second. The 19th year is when that scandal broke use. Yeah, because because it's convenient for you to count backwards from that. Do you ever play number games when you're driving with license plates? Oh, or? yeah. It's super That's it's, yeah, it's super right? easy to get to where I, exactly where you want. I, I do it all the time. Yeah. I do it all the time. I'm driving around. I drive a lot. I drive several hours a day. I play number games with license plates all the time. I'll just pick a number and decide, yeah, I'm going to try to. Every license plate I'm going to find, I'm going to try to make the number 36 or something. You make it every time. Yeah. Right? Yeah, every single time. Numbers are the easiest things to manipulate if you have no rules about how you're going to use them. Exactly. Yeah. Well, one is that in the scandal, it actually in Ahab's fall, it's linked to the tribe of Levi. I won't go through it. It's in the book, but yeah. it's linked. So could there possibly be a link with the tribe of Levi and the scandals of, of the Clinton years? Well, here's the thing. From the name Levi comes the name Levin. From Levin comes Lewin. From Lewin comes Lewinsky. Oh, the, come on. Yes. That, oh, my. I don't know if you knew this, Tom, but God. from the word intern comes internal. And he, <laughs> he probably gave her one of those. So, Which is what he yeah. should have done if he didn't want any evidence he on the show. It's what he did. Again, just, it all it all works out. The Lewinsky <laughs> scandal, it literally means the tribe of Levi. Are you and, serious? Yeah, absolutely serious. And and she was she was actually a descendant. She's a Levi. And that's in that's part of the fall of Ahab. Well, let me let me get even more mind boggling well. here. I mean, this this is what happens is that when, when Elijah rebukes Ahab yeah. for the scandal, uh, he repents. And so God says, okay, you're going to have a little time period before judgment. So there's a period. God's like, you oh, yeah. Hold on now. I want to, you had that scandal in the vineyard or whatever you had. I don't even know, but I'm, I'm going to give you 19 years from there. We're going to give you a few more months to simmer. Go to your room. I'll be up in a minute. <laughs> That's what that is. It is true. That's exact. Yeah. Go to your room and Go I'll be up there room. in a minute. Go to your room. When I simmer down yeah. and don't feel like beating you. <laughs> Read a book of the Bible three years from oh. the king's repentance to God. a calamity that comes on the nation. Okay. Now, did Bill Clinton never repent? Well, he did. It was a, it was a White House prayer meeting, and he said, this is my repentance. He actually said he repented. Take that date. What happens if you take that date, add the three years of the paradigm? Right. Could it lead to a significant event? It takes you to an exact day. The day it leads you to is September 11th, 2001. So hold on a second. So the the calamity for someone giving you consensual sex outside of wedlock is kill 3,000 people. (laughs) 
I feel like America is fucked right now. Jesus. Right? America is go I mean, we are in a rough spot. That's your that's the real okay. Take away everything else. The reason why 9-11 happened is a blowjob in the fucking Oval Office. Should have put in the Oval Orifice. I mean, if you're going to... It was. I mean, it depends on how she holds her mouth. That's true. Could That's be true. You never know. The day of the calamity. Incredible. The day of, to the day. And actually, he, he, it happened in the morning. Well, 9-11 then happened in the morning. Oh, who believes this <laughs> shit? Oh, and I, they, look, nobody gets a blowjob in the morning. <laughs> Breakfast happened in the morning, Tom. <laughs> the White House event of, of the repentance began at 8.30. 8.30 pinpoints the hour that 9-11 begins. No, no, it's not. No, it, actually, the first plane hit at 8.46. I looked that up today. It's not. And the I, fact that it's not true doesn't mean he shouldn't say it. And it's funny because, he, hmm. because there's no time in there that 8.30 matches, right? 8.30 doesn't match. It just doesn't fit. And and it ended, the event ended at 1030. Could that contain 9-11? The last event of 9-11, the tower, the North Tower coming down, at, happened at 1029. One well, that's not 1030. That's not a different number. So, so okay. If numbers are that important, yeah. then they need to exact, be exact, so that, right? So 1029 is not it. A minute later was 1030. This is to the day, to the minute, to the hour. I love that. It's not 10, to 29. the minute. He's like 1029. And a minute later, it was 1030. Yeah. And a minute after that, it was 1031. Yeah. <laughs> Who and, fucking cares? And did you catch what he said, though, when he's like, it's to the minute? It's uh -huh. not. The last event of 9-11, the tower, the North Tower coming down, at, happened at 1029. One minute later was 1030. This is to the day, to the minute, to the hour. The it's not to the minute. Not. It's not to the minute. You just added it's one. To the, it's to the approximate range. Yeah, around about yeah. then. But it's not to the minute. So, well, and that's the thing is, right, you've, you, you went through all this work, right, to, to fucking do your subtraction and your adding right. and all your... All your shit that doesn't, you know, that's that's bounding. At a certain point, there's no way you're going to make it fit perfectly. So just give up at that point. Yeah, just or, be like, I mean, you're already fucking made it all up anyway. Right, just, just lie up. and say it was 1030. Well, yeah, just lie, which is these what people, he did. He these, said yeah, at 830. Right. These people are once. not fact-checking. Yeah. There, nobody's listening. Nobody's listening to Jonathan Kahn's like, oh, I'm going to go back and double-check yeah. that. Nobody's doing that because it's obvious gibberish unless you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Unless you're predisposed to believe all these secret fucking number codes that sure. are hidden around you know, in your dollar bills and the secret number codes that are in your fucking alphabet cereal and like all that yeah. fucking nonsense. Unless you're predisposed to that gibberish. Yeah. If you're not, you, you, you wouldn't, I, I don't have to fact check this yeah. to know this isn't true. Sure. It's nonsense on its face. Yeah. And, and one of the things too is like, like, what does it do for you? Like, let's say that there is 20 minutes or 20 years in between the king and right. the fall and the king. Yeah. What do you Well, know? Bill Clinton his presidency was sandwiched between 20 years of Republicans, mm -hmm. eight with the, but with Bush, the younger, and then 12 with Reagan and Bush, the Bush, the older. Right. So his, his presidency is sandwiched between 20 years of Republicans. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like, when, when exactly are we looking at when this big calamity, we're counting back from 20 years from when the big calamity happened, just to try to find something that fits this, right? Of course. We're right. trying to find this, yeah. this piece that fits in. Well, we don't know when the calamity is going to happen, but we have to count backwards, right? We're always doing this work in reverse. We're never doing this work in the forward. Right. We're never saying, okay, well, this person comes to rise, and so 20 years from now is when we need to pay attention. Without the, the, the hindsight of seeing what the calamity is, there's nothing you could do ahead of time. Yeah, okay. So it's useless information well, anyway. Hey, hey. Even if even if it fucking matters, it doesn't matter at the after the fact. You are just being so picky. This guy clearly can predict the past with hinds with, with perfect with accuracy. Perfect hindsight. Absolutely. He, is, he can predict the past down to the minute. Down to the well, he is, not down to the no, minute. No, he can close. get it very close. Very can, close time. His theories can yeah. predict the past. It's on par. Almost. Almost. They could get really close, <laughs> get close to, to predicting the past. Yeah. <laughs> Ready to stick it in the glory hole? Get links to their Facebook, Twitter, and if you still use it, Google Plus account at their website, dissonancepod.com. If you need to be all discreet about it, contact them by email at dissonance.podcast at gmail.com. Or you can call and leave a ransom message at 740-74-DOUBT. That's 740-743-6828. Want to hear Cognitive Dissonance commercial free and gain access to exclusive content, including full patron only shows? Head to patreon.com forward slash dissonance pod 
and become a patron to support the show on a per episode basis. Love commercials? Not ready to become a patron? Give the guys a five-star review on iTunes or Stitcher. Or tell your buddies in the drunk tank about the show. We want to send a big sloppy glory hole to all the patrons and people who rate us. You fucking rock. Yeah, this is uh, from the BBC News. Uh, Trump UN speech. Why his rhetoric was a game changer. Trump gave a speech at the UN, uh, which was very seriously not good in some ways. In some ways, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and surprising in other ways, though. I, the, the, the part of it that I think I want to focus on is one of the parts that a lot of people is, are focusing on right now, and that's with respect to um, what he said about North Korea. Um, now, North Korea, I, I don't have to remind anybody, is a sovereign nation, right? They, they are their own country. They are sure. a sovereign nation. And granted, they are a, a, a nation run by an autocratic baby man yeah. who detonates hydrogen bombs inside of secret mountains in order to scare the world and basically hold us hostage to his bullshit and doesn't give a shit about the well-being of his own people. Sure. He's a monster. Doesn't care. He's an, he's absolute, a, he's an monster. absolute monster absolute of a human being. Yeah. Yeah. But one world leader to another, yeah. the appropriate way to refer to somebody is not as rocket man. Yeah. You don't come up. But I want to read exactly what he said. He said, if the United States is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. He told world leaders. And he said, Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and his regime. Name calling. Yeah. We are getting fucking name calling and threats of nuclear annihilation. Existential threats delivered to a man whose uh, grasp on power is tenuous. Uh, Kim Jong-un, his grasp of, of uh, his, his hold of power is built on this idea that he and his family alone are the only ones that can protect North Korea and its people from, you know, the, uh, uh, from, from the West, from specifically from the United States. Any existential threat is going to be met with more bombast and more rhetoric. He can't, this is a guy who cannot back down. Yeah. He's not allowed to back down the rhetoric and the narrative that put him into power does not allow him to back down. This is, this is an escalation. This isn't statesmanship. No. This isn't diplomacy. Yeah. He's playing right into North Korea's hands. This is exactly exact. They, they, this is, they don't even have to doctor this for propaganda. they just, I mean, right. they could, you could just play, play, word exactly, for word. play word for word. You don't right. have to doctor us at all. Just play the speech. You could translate this literally. And it, and it would play exactly into their hands. I give my 10 year old shit. If he name calls. Yeah. Who doesn't do his name call? Yeah. At least not in my fucking hearing. Yeah. Right. Cause that's not how you do this. Yeah. This is the president of the United States. And he's sort of flippantly talking about, we will totally destroy your country. Yeah. Rocket man. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. That's this not how, is, that's not how, that's, that is that's the, not how this works. That's the least amount of diplomacy that you want to have. And one of the things too is like, he goes there and he starts talking about sovereignty. He's talking about it. He mentioned it. I think I listened to something that said he said it, I think 25 times or something, sovereignty over and over and mm -hmm. over again. Leave it to a guy that goes to the United Nations to uh, talk about how separate we are from everything. You yeah, know what I mean? Right? Like, like, this is a guy who misunderstands the assignment. And one of the things that he did do, which is interesting, is that he sort of he sort of did hem and haw a little bit about the cost, but said that, you know, if things work out with the United Nations, it's worth the cost, sure. which is something that he's never said before. At least that's not what he was elected on. He was elected, when he was elected, he was elected on an isolationist policy. Right. This is, there's nothing more globalist than the United Nations. That is a globalist organization. Yeah, it is sure. an organization <clears throat> made to make it sound like, to make the world be a one closer to one cohesive unit and him playing nice with it is probably not great for his base because his base, you know, they probably well, they hate they, the United Nations. Right. Yeah. But they, they jerked off to the North right. Korea stuff. So he clearly right. threw yeah. in stuff in there for them, but uh, you're absolutely right. He's, he's all he's doing is just, he's stoking the fires that way. I, I can't, it's scary to think that, you know, they could just shoot a bomb at us. And then what happens? Then we nuke them. Well, we just nuked part of the world then. Yeah, well, and it, it's it's it's, and it's bigger way than more like, complicated. Now, than well, how does China respond, exactly. right? There's exactly. a shared border yep. there. Yep. So how does China respond when, you know, it's not like we can wage war at North Korea and say, oh, and by the way, we don't want the prevailing winds to shift any of this radioactive yep. fallout yep. 
into China. Yeah. If if we accidentally irradiate or or something goes wrong, what if he irradiates the place if we invade or something? Right. You know what I mean? Like, what if he just blows uh-huh. off the bombs? Right. I mean, this is not. These are not games. Yeah. These are not games. These are the lives of people. The North Korean people have nothing to do with this yeah. guy. Yeah. They have nothing to do with this guy. We don't want to. We don't want to nuke. We don't want to destroy human beings, men, women, children who have no say in how their government is being run. Yeah. They don't have any, they don't have any choice here. Yeah. We're going to we're going to do what? We're going to incinerate them because of fucking uh, two assholes basically can't fucking put their dick away. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. That, that that would be the worst stain on our humanitarian history as a people possible. How many people live in North Korea? 25 million, I think. That's that that shit is Legitimately, that's really scary. scary. Yeah. Now I just pray over this equipment. We speak over the PowerPoint presentations, the, all of the video projectors, and we say, "Devil, we know what you love to do in meetings like this." And we say, "You will not, in Jesus' name, you will not prevent this message from going out. No microphone problems, in Jesus' name." This is Right Wing Watch. Now, uh, a week or two ago, we talked about Lance uh, Wallaby's. Uh, he was in a in a library. If he I was recall. in a library, and he was he was celebrating. He was he was patting himself on the back and pulling his own dick about how happy he was that he moved Hurricane Irma ever so gently, so it only did billions of dollars worth of damage and killed like thirty people. Um, well, Hurricane Maria was coming, and and it was about to hit Puerto Rico, and so he figured he would get involved and uh, ask Maria to turn away. We see that hurricane coming to Puerto Rico. We command the hurricane to veer off course into the ocean. Oh, get out of here, hurricane. That'll work out for you. Did everybody just got out their broom and just shoot it off the porch? <laughs> right? Ricochet off into the ocean. Ricochet off. Ricochet would have to bounce off of yeah. something. Well, it, bounced, it, did. it did. It bounced right off of Puerto Rico. Yeah, well, <laughs> and by bounce, you mean tore in half? <laughs> off into the ocean. You shall not hit, nor shall you destroy Puerto Rico. I like to say that because the liberals at Right Wing Watch make fun of me because they think I have power over the hurricane. But they admit that it's not just me. It's the 5,000 people praying with me. They got you in. Do you know that? You were in the newspaper? They were covering you too. They're making fun of both of us. Eh, so what? In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you're giving us power. They're just playing you saying what you say. And it's not They're not making newspaper. fun of you. Right Wing Watch isn't a newspaper, yeah, well, you stupid I mean, asshole. A weird newspaper to get a video in. Right? <laughs> it's like somebody somebody like cut out a little iPhone space and <laughs> taped it, it in, in there. as best they could so they could play the video on your newspaper. I, I love it. He's like, the liberals like to make fun of me. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're unsuccessful in your attempts to do like You can have 5,000, you can have 50,000, you can have 5 million people. Yeah. They can all pray as hard as they can. And it doesn't make a lick of difference. Yeah. You know, I'm going to guess that at least 5,000 people in Puerto Rico, when that hurricane bore down upon them, I'm going to guess at least 5,000 people were praying. Yeah. And their their mayor or governor or whatever, the governor of Puerto Rico or whatever he is, the king. Yeah. What, what do they yeah. have down there? Yeah. The protectorate um, sure. or something? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. But that guy said uh, he he wound up thanking God after it was all over. And thanking him? And I'm like, the fuck? Yeah. So if anyone doesn't know, by the way. Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico and fucked Puerto Rico yeah. up. Yeah. So Puerto Rico is the entire island yeah. of Puerto Rico has no power. It is a 100% loss of power across the entirety of Puerto Rico. And they're talking about some areas, maybe months, weeks months. or to months, months to be restored yeah. of power. Can you, I mean, th- this is a massive, they, they said that nothing like this has ever happened that this is the most significant storm that's hit Puerto Fair, Rico. The most significant one, yeah. Ever. Yeah. I, ever. They, they And months to be without power. And the governor says, God is with us. We are stronger than any hurricane. <laughs> Together we will rise again. Unless a hurricane blows us over. I, it, I didn't realize God was down there. He's like with Habitat for Humanity. He's like putting <laughs> shit back together. Him and Jimmy Carter flew right in and... God is with us. They're going to be without power for fucking months, man. People are going to die. Yeah. Like that's going to cause well, a lot yeah, of Because you know? I was listening to a story. They were saying that um, the people down there are uh, in hospitals. The hot generators only have a couple of weeks. They're like, yeah, we got a couple of weeks worth of stuff. So what they need to do, what I think the world needs to do is just ship a fucking bunch of generators and gasoline and a bunch of stuff down there to try to keep the very essential things powered. But they're going to be living off powdered food for... Oh, I months mean, because you can't yeah. refrigerate anything. You can't 
Well, refrigerated uh, medicines. Yeah, all that you know? stuff. And there, and there there are parts of Puerto Rico that are pretty remote to yeah. get to. They're, and, and they're gonna if they're without power. I'm gonna guess that those are the areas you're gonna be without power the longest. You know, if all of a sudden you had to go camping without being able to prepare for your camping trip for months. Yeah. That's what this is like. Yeah. You know, you're you where are you gonna get food? You're gonna go to the grocery store? Oh yeah, the grocery store doesn't have power. Yeah. So, so the grocery I, yeah, store can't most care. of it's most right. of it's garbage anyway. Right. It's gonna be dry goods, canned, canned goods. goods. That's that's and that's all gonna be gone very soon. Right. Well, that so, they can at least get replenished, yeah. though. Yeah. You know, but they can't get milk. Yeah, but, and they can't get formula. But we're talking about if it's enough to tear down your infrastructure with your electricity, it almost certainly damaged the roads. Oh, so now yeah, you're talking right. about how do you get it back to those places? Right. How do you get the food to those areas right. that ship that food? Yeah, right? right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like there's just I, at this point, it's just an absolute disaster down there. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be following this story very closely because it's it's one of those things where you're like, holy fuck, they got fucking railed, and now you're just like. I mean, you, you're right. There could be a lot of deaths if there's not a huge humanitarian multi-country support of this. Yeah. I mean, if you think about like how much we rely on electricity to enhance hygiene. Right. You know, I yeah. mean, it, this is going to be a real problem. Yeah. A they, real problem. There was a, a one of those doomsday shows I watched on the History Channel where they were talking about... Um, like an EMP burst? Yeah, it was, but they were saying like what they... And it wasn't an EMP burst. It was just people getting sick. It was a plague. So oh, a bunch okay. of people yeah. got sick, uh -huh. but a bunch of people died. And so these people, enough people died that knew how to run the power grid. Oh, right. Yeah. And then once the power grid goes down, everything falls apart. Everything. Right. They talked about all the different systems that run on our power grid and all the different things that happen because our power works. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, that's the one domino. When that falls, everything falls. No cars because there's nothing to pump the stuff out from the ground in. No yeah. trains anymore because they don't they can't function when they, you know, there's not enough fuel to get on them and they can't figure it like right. there's all this stuff oh, that has Jesus, to, yeah. there's all these different things. You can't switch tracks because it's electricity. There's all of these yeah. different things, you know, that are gonna go crazy because of it. Can't you, no more water, right. no more. I mean, all of these different things that fall apart when electricity. Right. And this is an example right now. You know, they didn't have to have the plague. All they did was just skip right to the power generator getting, being, being yeah, gone. Now right. what's going to happen? That's going to be a crazy time down there. Power over the elements because they have to submit to the authority of Jesus on the earth. All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto us. We take that authority over that hurricane and command it to depart from Puerto Rico into the ocean. We intercede for the defenseless. That's enough. It's enough already with these hurricanes. That's it. Stop it. <laughs> I've had it. I've had. It. I'm snapping I'm glad, fabulously. I'm glad. I'm glad you're 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 perfectly safe. Right. And snapping at a hurricane that is just bore down right over fucking Puerto Rico and bowl and just bowled it right over. Thanks for your snapping. Right. You know. You might as well have not done anything. Maybe he, he shouldn't have done it, yeah. right? Because then there are people out there who are going to think that they helped. Yeah. Oh, God, there's so many hot dogs coming. You know, uh, I mean, it, it's in those emails. Oh, Obama's getting 60 plus thousand dollars in hot dogs. I love those scrumptious, delicious hot dogs. Oh, I can't wait to get a hot dog myself. Oh, Jesus fucking exchange. This is from Right Wing Watch. Mike Chernovich and Alex Jones think the deep state is after them because they discuss pedophilia. Ew. Yeah. Just fucking ew. Can could you fucking move on to another topic? Wow, these guys. Please. Are... They're obsessed with this they shit. They really are. This is their In a weird fucking David Icke style yeah. obsession with this. Right? Yeah. This is real. This has got to the point where it's real weird. Why isn't Morgan Freeman doing a video on pedophilia in Hollywood? Where is Morgan Freeman's video on the uh, abuse in Hollywood of underage people, boys and girls? Why is Morgan? Because Morgan Freeman doesn't doesn't write and direct all of his fucking documentaries. Morgan Freeman just reads things. Why well, isn't Morgan Freeman doing that? Why aren't people, if you want a fucking in-depth documentary, somebody's got to fund it. Morgan Freeman just isn't out working for free. Yeah, what is it? Well, I, I'm super confused by that. Like Morgan Freeman's just like, well, I've got to talk about everything <laughs> because my voice is amazing. His voice is fucking I've amazing. got an amazing voice, so amazing I just have voice. to go around Speaking up on every yeah. top. What? Because what? he's a voice actor. Like all voice actors write their own fucking stuff. And Friedman not standing up against pedophiles in Hollywood. Wait, wait he's not standing up against. Has he made a statement about pedophiles in Hollywood? Has Morgan Freeman like wore a shirt that's like, 
I'm totes cool with pedophiles. Right. Like, Nambla or bust. <laughs> <laughs> Nambia or bust. Right on it. <laughs> Every time you look around, they got nothing to say about that. Because it's not happening. Ha- <laughs> that's exactly what you would say about something if it wasn't happening, though. Like if you have seen, I rarely comment oh, on dragons. I right? just, I just don't do right? it. I just don't comment uh, on them. You know, it's it's pretty telling that they're not talking about the thing they don't know about. Well, mm-hmm. I have a lot to say about conspiracy theories involving Russia. What what I think is really going on here is Putin is actually very anti-pedophile. And it's- Everybody's anti-pedophile. Who's, Except for pedophiles, who's strangely. Who's pro-pedophile? Yeah. Nambla. Nambla. Yeah, no, that's the thing, right? Like, universally, everybody is anti-pedophile. That is not a difficult or courageous stance to take. <laughs> right? It's like, there's like one tear in their eye, like, you're so brave. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could speak up like yeah. you speak up. <laughs> Done a lot of Things to fight. Oh, no, that's crime. what it is. There's a global anti-pedophile network. Down, if you're not for the pedophiles, you're against them, and that's that's what it is. Yeah, every that's <laughs> yes. <laughs> for the pedophiles, you're against them. There, yeah. Now I kind of walk a median path where I'm yeah, just like, I'm, I don't really care about that. A little undecided. I just, you know, sometimes if there's a kid getting molested, I just, you know, like a priest, turn my other turn. What the was other a kid way. wearing? Yeah. You know, I mean it's two sides to every exactly. story. Exactly. Absolutely. Right? Those kids are asking for it Jeez. in their fucking Oshkosh Bagat. <laughs> and anybody for the deep state is now a pedophile. And everybody for the deep state is now a pedophile. There we go. All right. I'm, I'm glad we got there. Okay, here's that. Everybody yeah. I don't like is a pedophile. Checkmate, deep state. <laughs> Deep state is definitely part of the pedophile networks and they are pro pedophile. There's no question about it. Where, well, I think where, there's a lot of questions about it. <laughs> I think a, a I, lot of people have you, questions. You did, you're just saying it, yeah. but you're not <laughs> providing any evidence whatsoever. Again, in the earlier segment, we talked about how Google and Facebook have literally hired lobbyists to fight to allow lobbyist. the advertising of enslaved and kidnapped women on the web. Yeah, that's what they're doing. The Facebook is advertising enslaved and kidnapped women on the web. I am not part of that secret group. That's so weird. I didn't get added. Turns out it's not a secret group, Tom. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Because they invited Alex Jones and he blabbed about it. Right. Right. So if you want to kidnap a child, chain her to a radiator on the house, a beat her up with a whip. Okay. What? Okay. No, this is very specific. I'm still in. I'm still in. (laughs) Hold on, I want to. I, you had me going. I had my pants down. And let Google ten guys uh, rape her a day and give her AIDS, then shoot her in the back of the head and throw her in a lake. It's, it's totally liberal. Jesus Christ! What the? F- First of all, this is an extremely specific and elaborate fantasy Very that they've elaborate. created. Absolutely. And it's a little weird that they were able to finish each other's fucking pedophile <laughs> sentence, right? Like you know, somebody- they're so into they're so into the fantasy of the pedophile that they're able to. That they're able, they're to, able to put themselves outline right in the it. whole thing. Yeah, they're right, right in. Yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. What would you do? Uh, let me give you my list of I things that I don't, I wouldn't, oh, I wouldn't I would do. Never do any it's of these things. I would never what I would a do woman to a radiator, ra- specifically a radiator with 17 links on the chain. <laughs> I have a radiator <laughs> just for this. I had to get it from Actually, an antique yeah. shop. I don't have, I even have steam heating in my house. I just yeah. drilled a radiator into the corner. <laughs> <of> the <room. laughs> it's yeah, like, just like suicide nets at Foxconn with Apple. As long as you're liberal, it's loving. What well, they, what does that mean? I literally don't suicide know. Suicide nets at Foxcom. Oh, well, I know what that is. I know what that means yeah. too, right? But what does that have to do with, with if you, as long as it's liberal, you're loving. Uh, can we go back real quick to the to the, uh, 10 guys rape the girl and then sure. you have to kill her? Is that the limit? Mm. Do, are they expired yeah. at that point? Well, you all have to go through the DNR to get your tag. Okay. Yeah, and right, then, right. And then you and then you get your turn. Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that makes more yeah. sense. Yeah, I was it's just like, wondering. It's like when you go to the butcher and you pull the little number thing. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like now serving. Now serving number. <laughs> and you just stand there, you got like 11. You're like, fuck. Fucking. They're going to kill her. I got to fuck the hole in the back of her head. They want your ad revenue. Not even that, but they'll say, hey, if you want to advertise on the web for molesting children, then go right ahead. You have that free speech. Where is that at? I, what are you talking about? This is not happening. None of these things are occurring it's the same, at all. It's the same thing with Pizzagate, though. You know, right. you just say a bunch of stuff out into the world to out, outrage a bunch of your fucking mouth-breathing, foolish followers who don't pay any attention to oh whether or not something is actually real or not. And you can actually whip up your crazy crowd into a frenzy enough to bring an assault weapon to a pizza parlor. I, 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 
Somebody's going to break into Facebook with a fucking assault weapon. It's going to happen. But, and it's not going to be Alex Jones reading a little fucking, I'm real, real sorry about Pizzagate story. Right. It's Alex Jones is going to get fucking, all of Facebook lawyers are going to team up on him. Ten of them are going to fuck him and they're going to shoot, shoot him, him in the, the back, back of the head. head. Dump him in a That's what's going to happen. <laughs> they're going to put him, they're going to put him in their fucking, their legal office tied to a radiator. <laughs> 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 right, but Mike Cernovich and Alex Jones and Paul Joseph Boston and Jack Posobiec and Andrew Torba of Gab and no, nobody else has free speech rights. No, no, no. So they're fighting. Is he hard. saying he doesn't have free speech? What he's saying is, is that he's being like certain areas, like you know, people get taken off Twitter, or you know, I guess oh. maybe they're maybe they're pushing back against Facebook at this point because maybe Facebook might be probably flagging them as fake news. Well, either yeah, flagging them or pushing their stories down instead yeah, of right. you know what I mean, like raising them up. And they're mad at Facebook about it, and they're saying, "Oh, you guys can advertise for pedophiles, but if I post something, you don't give you don't boost my post." <laughs> what? The, what are you a fucking teenage girl? My selfie wasn't pretty enough. Yeah, Not well, enough people liked it. These people, man, that's how they make their money. Are you so. fucking serious? Well, that's how they I didn't get money. enough validation clicks, so I got my fucking nipples hard or whatever. <laughs> hard to shut us up because why? What is the common theme, Alex? Anybody, Lying. We can yeah. we, making shit up. Yeah, exactly. Being a good storyteller. We didn't talk about. We're not pedophiles. We're not. Pedophiles. Pedophiles. We're, not we're not. We're not psychopaths. We're not in the yeah. psychopath club. Yeah, if we quit talking about pedophiles and the pedophile rings, then they would leave us alone. That's what this is really. And by the way, you yeah, if you stop lying about shit and making shit up, nobody cares that you're talking about pedophiles or pedophiles. Because nobody, like the only people yeah, that care are when people react to it right. in your group. When people in your in your weird cult that listens to you and follows you goes out and and does some sort of paramilitary action because of it then everyone then cares everybody cares yeah. everybody's like oh that's not good yeah. before that everyone dismisses but you. Every, nobody thinks that what you're saying has any fucking grain of truth to right. it right i think i think that this is that the reason why pedophiles is the thing that they quote unquote go after is because it's a disgusting thing that you can smear somebody with yeah and for so sure. And so it's not that they're obsessed with pedophiles. It's that they just use that as the smear to get rid of all of the people that, that they, push them away. Like well, Google and Facebook are clearly, yeah. they're in a war with them. This free speech stuff that they're bitching about, they're just going to keep saying, oh yeah, well, they're clearly run by pedophiles. Sure. That's the reason. Anyone they don't like is a pedophile. Yeah. It's it's just weird and super obvious. I That sounds like libel to me. I don't know anything about the law, but when you say... And this is what he says about Google and Facebook. Google and Facebook, we can now declare with absolute certainty are pro pedophile. That yeah, sounds like right? that sounds like a suable offense to me. Yeah, I don't know how that works either, but it's it's an egregious and weird claim to make. And yeah. again, like I I I know I know what you're saying. Like I know that they're using this disgusting term, but they're they've gotten real weird about this pedophile thing, man. It's like the focus of their thoughts and really show is. and like. Such a weird, gross thing to focus on. And then, by the way, their parents brought them in. It wasn't their fault. It's true in some cases, but they aren't all valedictorians. They weren't all brought in by their parents. Uh, for everyone who's a valedictorian, there's another hundred out there that um, they weigh 130 pounds and they've got calves the size of cantaloupes because they're hauling 75 pounds of marijuana across the desert. This is terrible. This is Right Wing Watch. Steve King demands that any DACA deal include end of birthright citizenship. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Now, it's, it's a slightly more nuanced stance that he takes than the right wing watch headline, but only very, yeah. very slightly. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip a little bit into this um, because he starts he he does start talking about some stuff, and I don't I just want to make sure we start because the person asked him a bunch of questions. I don't I don't, I don't really care about that. I want to skip a little ahead in. So I, I think it's an important task for those of us who believe in the president's agenda that he arrived in Washington with and in the rule of law, and in securing our borders, and all these things that actually launched him into the presidency. This guy uses the rule of law like a shield. He does it all the time. He says that he says that phrase constantly because it makes it seem like what he's doing is moral, but it's not. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like laws can be unjust. Well, and even the rule of law thing is bullshit because until DACA gets completely repealed, yeah. it, is the, the, it, is, it is the rule of law. Yeah. yeah. Whether you like how it was enacted by executive order or not, it's the rule of law. We've got to have our voices heard and heard loud and clear. And so if there is to be a deal struck, the effort, the, if there is to be a deal struck, 
the border security and domestic enforcement needs to be needs to be locked into the absolute maximum. Yeah. You hear that? Yep. Border security and internal stuff needs to be. I mean, ag- like, absolute maximum means you just start deporting people. Yeah. I mean, he's talking like he really is talking about like shock troops. Yeah. The only way is you're going to get 11 million people out of here is to do some door to door. Yeah. Search. I mean, some you're serious. You're, yeah. you're going to have to do some serious internment to get people out of here yeah, because like, you got to put them somewhere before you ship but them you off. Gotta, but more than that, so you got to find them. Yeah. You have to identify them and yeah. find them. And then you got to kick down doors. We're, we're going to have a show me your papers yeah. society. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nobody wants to live in a show yeah. me your papers society. None of us want to live like that. No. Even I think even the most hardline conservatives draw a line at a certain point. Yeah. Well, they, they you know, it's so funny because like those guys are typically like small government, small government, small government. Those are the guys that don't want to show you your fucking driver's license. Yeah. If somebody stops me on the street and says, show me your birth or your papers or whatever, these are the guys who are going to complain the loudest yeah. about that. Yeah. But what you don't realize is how the fuck are you supposed to get rid of a letter, even if you wanted to do it, and I, I, I don't agree it should be done, but even if you wanted to do it, how the fuck are you supposed to get rid of 11 million people? You have to identify who they are, then find out where they live, then capture, capture them, them, right? And put them in a place and then, yeah, to, it, to vet them, to make sure that they need to go. Right. Because you could always... Just happen to grab somebody who didn't happen to have their license on them. Right. Right. Yeah. And then they put them in an internment camp and they ship mom. Like, fucking, I was a citizen. What the fuck? <laughs> so you got to vet all these people. You've got to have personnel to do all of those tasks. And then you've also got to have all of the infrastructure to get rid of all. Of them. Yeah. Well, plus it's not like they all come from Mexico. Yeah. They come from countries. We're going to have to, we're going to have to deport people to all over the world. Yeah. You know, they have these guys like, like Steve King, they have this like, what, what's embedded in a lot of this is that it's all from Mexico. Yeah. Like we'll just, we'll, just, from Mexico. we'll push yeah. them over the border and then they'll all just be Mexicans. But you know, when you're talking about the 11 million undocumented immigrants who come into this country, yeah. they are, they are people that are representative of every nation across yeah. the world. You know, it's, it, it is, it is not just like a bunch of people from Mexico that yeah. are pushing over. So you'd have to have this massive infrastructure just to rip these families apart, just to damage our own economy. We have to spend billions of dollars. I mean, 11 million people have spent billions and billions of dollars. Yeah, a lot of. Money. What do you think it would cost? I wonder to identify, uh, to to identify, track, capture, inter, try, and remove. Yeah. One person. Let's say on the 11 million people. Let's say on the low end that costs 10 grand a person. Yeah. We're talking many billions of dollars billions. now. And you know when they talk about you know Mexico. Yeah, Mexico's a way in for a lot of people, but they're coming from all over South right. America. It's not just one country. It's not just, well, they're not just Mexicans. There's illegal immigrants they're from Europe. From, they're from all over the South America. Yeah, right. and there's illegal immigrants from Europe. There's illegal immigrants from Asia. There's illegal immigrants from all over. Af- everywhere. And, and so, but but we're, if you're talking about just, you know, if you just say, okay, well, what about Hispanics? What about the people from South America? Yeah, there's people from all over South America right. that make their way to Mexico to come here. And they work their way through. Because that's the shared border. They happen all right. the time. I know. And I would say on top of that, here are some things that are President Trump's promises that aren't in the dialogue today. Uh, one of them is English is the official language of the United States of America. That's an 83% issue. Uh, couldn't you put that up on the table and just say, throw that into the mix without dissent? Why? Just I mean, to be xenophobic? Yeah, just so we can just so we can reinforce that this is a very, very, very conservative group of people that are in office, I guess. Yeah. I mean, like, like what's, what's the benefit to that? Well, it does, makes, it, does it change your life every day? Yeah. Does it change your life every day? It makes day? the xenophobes happen. It doesn't change my life. No. And so let's say you made it the, the uh, official language. We have no official language. So we made it the official language of the United States. So what? Does that mean everybody's now required to speak it by law? Or does it probably just mean that we have to provide English language services in our schools, which we already do? Yeah. Or we have to print all the signs in English and we can never print anything in another language, which right. is silly because, Every, that, because yeah. that then says, well, we don't want tourists from anywhere else. Yeah, right. It, that's crazy. Yeah. Does it make any sense? It, it, nothing would change. Or without serious dissent. Next one, birthright citizenship. That's maybe more than 750000 a year 
of babies that are born in the United States to illegal mothers or illegal parents that have we've, we've followed the practice of automatic citizenship. Because that's how you not, become a citizen. Yeah. That's you have, you're born here. That's yeah. how it works. That's that, how it worked for you. It's, it's how it worked for me. For, yeah. for that's how it worked for fucking Steve King. Right. Come the fuck on. Yeah. It's, it's not following the practice. That's like constitutionally, that's one of the definitions of how we know who's a sure. citizen. Yeah. You're born here. Great. But they, these people think that, you know, like, like they fucking, they run over here at eight and a half weeks so they could shit a baby out as fast as they can or eight and a half months. So they could shit a baby out as fast as they can. And then fucking like, well, now my kid's supposed to be here and who's going to take care of him? That they say that that's the fucking fantasy. That's the narrative. That yeah, I know. Live, right. That they're fucking crawling under fucking barbed wire. With their fucking yeah. belly sticking out because they, they're they they're coming over here to, to have a baby on our soil. Right. When you have the baby on our soil, it's now, you know, now we take responsibility for it. Well, what if we did? You know what I mean? Like, okay, even if that were true, like, I'm sure it's true sometimes. I'm sure. Sure, I'm sure that happens. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you know what? I, I didn't choose that baby. Like, fucking, we don't, none of us get to pick or very yeah. few of us rather get to pick where we're from. Yeah. I mean, none of us get to pick where we're from. We're in the country that we're in because that's probably where you were born. Yeah. Almost all of you. Yeah. It's just where it's just, and you didn't choose that. You're not, you didn't, you didn't do anything special to earn it. Votes from the womb. Right. Yeah. That's just it. It's luck of the fucking draw. Yeah. And, and, and you're right. Like, so what? Like, okay, well that baby then becomes a citizen. Yeah. Welcome. Cool. Cool. All right. Cool. Yeah. It's, I, I, you know, the thing is, is like, you, you think this is going to be a huge problem. It's clearly not. I don't see the problem. The constitutional or the statutory directive of it, that can be part of this mix. And another one is that we need to be counting citizens instead of people when it comes to redistricting, because there are far too many seats of Congress that are directed by illegals that are that are counted the same in the census for redistricting as American citizens are. We had like 25 million people that were illegal voted in the last election. Trump still got elected, right? Isn't that your fucking narrative? That's their story. Like is. Fucking a million fucking you know, mariachi bands came to fucking vote. <laughs> isn't, that what, isn't that what they're saying? Like this fucking, this joke of like five or six million that we were promised fucking evidence for. I haven't seen that. Have in you seen fucking that? Like June, in like January, they were promising evidence yeah. for this. This one guy's like, oh, I got the fucking evidence. Oh my God, it's oh, going to be amazing. Guy. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. I haven't fucking heard from that guy in a while. Well, he's probably Where's that guy? Dead. <laughs> he got captured by a mariachi band? <laughs> what the fuck happened? I want to wear one of those outfits. I would kill that. Those outfits are fucking awesome. Those three amigos outfits? Oh my God. Uh, I, that's cultural appropriation. That's uh, the, uh, I don't even the, know what you would call that. A mariachi. Trace outfit. friends? Yeah. Trace <laughs> And that would move, um, according to old testimony, between nine and 11 congressional seats out of the Democrats' hands in states like Florida, Texas, California, and up into the hands of Republicans, conservative Republicans, Utah, Indiana, perhaps Iowa. Those are three things that I think should be in this mix and dialogue that nobody has brought up until uh, until today. That's because they're bad ideas. How about we end gerrymandering, fuckface? How about right? that? Because that's that, there's that's, yep. that's been that's been the poison of this country for years. Yep. Has that been shit is gerrymandering awful. bullshit. Look at fucking, you know, type it in the Google one time. Just like and look at the most gerrymandered districts. They're crazy. Looking. They look like fucking amoebas. They, they're, they're Rorschach yeah, tests. They're fucking oh, ridiculous. what's the district? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Looking. And, and, and like a tiny little line with a huge blob and then like little fucking spindly areas all the way around. <laughs> it reminds me of the way that O'Hare Airport is technically Chicago. Right. And so like there's a there's Chicago. And then there's a lot. If you look at if you look at a map of Chicago, the Chicago makes sense. And then there is a little tiny tentacle that sticks out. And there's a and yeah. then there's the airport. And then there's the airport. And that's so, it because it's part of, part of Chicago. But where everything but really around that Mont. Chicago is Rosemont and uh and you know whatever those other shitty terrible cities are around there. I don't even know yeah. Palatine and Ew, you know stop all those other like different cities that are all is like right, right around. There. I don't even Bell, know what they are. Boom. I don't even know what they are. Like they're they're garbage. Bensonville. Cities. They're garbage cities right. that all circle O'Hare because right. all the housing's cheap because constantly all you hear is. <laughs> well, to be fair, you don't hear it for very long because you soon yeah, go deaf. Soon you go deaf. Right. But yeah, you're right. It's just like this little tiny area outside of Chicago because nobody in Chicago is like, everybody in Chicago is like, we got to, we want to put the one airport by the Mexicans. <laughs> and we want to make sure the other one is really far away. 
<laughs> and that's our airport. Well, airport that's by the Mexicans. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. All right, this story is from Right Wing Watch. This is Josh Berenstein of the Berenstein Bears. He's suggesting that God is divinely intervening to prevent the removal of Confederate monuments. I I love this guy. I like I like his whole like thing he's got going on. He really on does video. have it. Yeah, his his green screen is pretty solid. He's got his Patreon his, thing over yeah, there. His green screen game is pretty solid. Here we go. This is right. Josh Berenstein. The 14 communists, and that's what I'll call them, the 14 communists, anti-freedom of speech council members of the Dallas City Council, voted 13 to 1 to remove a statue of Robert E. Lee. From- okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That was their choice. Racist a, statue. Yeah. It's cool a story. Yeah. He's the general of the racist secessionist army that yeah. failed yeah. to secede yeah. from this nation in order to protect their racism. And it's clearly for racism. It's not for the yeah. lost cause of the Confederacy. Yeah. The, 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 we, and we talk about this in Citation Needed. So there's a Citation Needed episode that's about this. But like it, th- that idea that, that the Civil War was about states' rights is nonsense. Yeah, Just silly. read. All you got to do is read what the people involved Wrote, wrote, and just read what she's just read their articles of confederation. Right. Yeah. It says it right in there. It, yeah. You just, you just rely on the source, rely yeah. on the guys who were the leaders of the secessionist movement. Yeah. They all say, I mean, like the, the writings of um, uh, the vice president of the confederacy, uh, not Je- Jefferson Davis, the president, the, the other guy, I can't remember his name. He says out loud that like, I don't know, I'm paraphrasing, but only by a little, he says something like the subordination of the Negro is the cornerstone upon which the Confederacy yeah. is built. Right. I am paraphrasing, but only the yeah, littlest slightest bit. Slightest bit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You can look it up. Just yeah. look it up. And and if you're and if you are one of these people who thinks, you know, I just think that we really need to keep those ha- those those statues around, listen to the final bit we do in that in that episode. Yeah. Just listen to the fine, the fine, you could, you don't have to listen to the whole episode, go to the very end and listen to the skit and then just see if you still agree from the park. So they called a crane company to come and take the 14 ton statue away. But when the crane got there, it turns out that the crane was too small. And this statue was so large that that crane didn't have the capacity. Yeah, to that's rem- what the crane is too small means. We got there and the crane was too small and the statue was too big. And yeah, I kind of figured the statue was too big if the crane was too small. I got <laughs> I that. That's go how there. that fucking relationship you don't works. Have to go there. Move it. So there you go. There was the first delay. So they had to call another company and get another crane to come down to take this statue. So the city of Dallas reaches out, finds another crane company. There's a lot of crane companies in the Dallas area that actually refuse to take it down, which I think is great. Uh, Their reasonings were, number one, probably because they didn't want it to be taken down, but also because they were worried about retaliation. Retaliation from fucks like you. Right. That's what they're worried about. They're worried about the fucking hillbillies. They're worried about the creepy weirdos with all their fucking guns that love fucking General Lee. That's who they're worried about. That doesn't say anything good about your side, does it? Right? And violence and things of that nature. So they called another crane company. And the oh other- Oh my God. Oh my Are fucking going God. going through the Rolodex? Oh my fucking good God. Lord. Crane company was on its way. It was okay. actually on its way. Yeah. To come oh, yeah. and take away the okay. statue. Okay. And instead, it was involved in a horrific, fatal accident. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're going to capitalize <laughs> on this shit. for your fucking political point? Good Lord. The crane was heading to Lee's Park and was attempting to make a left hand turn when a semi trailer ran a red light at very high speeds and plowed directly into it. The semi trailer driver, unfortunately, is no longer with us and was. Well, that guy got punished by God for nothing then, but he just. He has nothing to do with the crane oh, yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. He just went to work yeah. today. God just texted him and he fucking he opened oh, it. Yeah, I like, oh, shit, I got to respond. Oh, it's titties. <laughs> it's titties. <laughs> I always send those truckers titties. <laughs> pronounced dead at the scene. So far, from my reports that I have been trying to find, I could not find the identity 
of the victim. So all I will say is that my thoughts and prayers uh, go out to this victim. Randomly, no, yeah. your thoughts and prayers go nowhere because you don't know where to point them. My, I don't know who it was, but I'm thinking in general terms. And, and I, God knows. I just want to throw this out there. Thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Way to take you one for the team. You delayed this for another day. Right? Good Yo, for you. What a pointless it's, obstruction. It's not, like, it's not like they're not going to get another crane. They're not going to be like, oh, Gus, the only crane that could have ever <laughs> moved this was in a horrible <laughs> fatality accident. So we're never going to do it. Yeah. Uh, okay? Scrap that plan. So a crane was on its way over and it was hit. And then fucking somebody died and they didn't move it that day. It's not like they're going to give up. Right? They're just going to to hose it off. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's going to be like, you. is the crane still good? Yeah, yeah crane's still yeah, good. crane's fine. There's just a boot lodged in <laughs> the bottom of it, but other than that, we're good. Here's what we do. We pick the crane up with another yes. crane and you put it on another so truck crazy. and you drive it home. Who I fucking cares? Um, but look, I don't do a religious show. Uh, I really kind of keep to the political things and political nature of things. But isn't this a little odd? that two attempts have been made to take down this statue, and for whatever reasons, they have not been successful, the second of which uh, being a fatal accident. Yeah, now if the next one blows up all of Dallas, then maybe we have something. Yeah. I, I would, I guess, I guess there could be possibly an argument if they weren't such banal everyday yeah, every events. Day. Right, right, if it was like shit, if it was struck by lightning, Again and again, again and again, again, right? again and again. Right. Yeah. Or if there's just like a magic invisible yeah. force field that shows exactly. up around the statue. Yeah. Or like the ghost of General Robert E. Lee comes out with his fucking saber <laughs> and fucking decapitates the the driver that yeah, like if something yeah. happened, sure. but nothing happened. Yeah. It turned into a dragon or well, something. Right. Yeah. The first like attempt a, was yeah, like a the grand crane's dragon. too small. Yeah. <laughs> grand dragon. <laughs> So we want to thank all our patrons. Of course, we would like to thank our newest patrons, Kara, Dana, Jessica, Jonathan, Tamara, Sarah Lise, Carrie, Marky, Deborah, Yodel Mountain Conspiracy Cover Band. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> Carter, Anthony, Amber, Amanda, and Ashley. Thanks so much for your generous donations. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, we're still working toward that goal, that Cecil quit his job goal. So if you are are not a patron and you wish to become one, you can always go to patreon.com, become a patron on a per episode donation basis. Uh, it helps us out and hopefully eventually gets me to quit my job. So thank you so much. So I wanted to update everybody on what happened last week. Um, she said yes. So I just wanted to say <laughs> 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 we got a message from the person who had uh, had proposed to his uh, his soon to be hopefully partner. And she said, yes. That's so, so crazy. That's so sweet. So we got a message from snake girl, Sarah, uh, snake girl, Sarah said, I know when people start playing the pronoun game, when people decide that instead of calling me by my pronouns, they make sure to never use any pronouns. And it upsets me, me telling you I'm female and you treating me as genderless is not being supportive. We understand that. We were talking about people who are just going to be assholes who are going to misgender you. They're never going to be supportive to you. They're never going to be the person who you think is going to have to be supportive. The very best you can hope from them is indifference. And I think that, you know, there's going to be people no matter what are just not going to be supportive. And the, I, I think that you would probably rather be okay with indifference rather than outright hostility. Yeah. And the, the other thing we wanted to address was the nonsense um, arguments that were floated around by Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson where, you know, they're, they're, they're supposing this imagined scenario. Someone's going to come in and say, you need to call me one seven nine two six five two nine three four two six today. And it's like, okay, well, you know, this is an easy solution to get around. If something is that complicated or difficult to remember, you know, and you're trying to do your best and you want to be decent, yeah. you just don't use a pronoun, yeah. right? Just use people's names yeah. rather than a pronoun. I, I, I don't think I say he when I refer Very directly often. to somebody, often, right? It just never occurs. Yeah. So when you refer around yeah. somebody, it's just as easy to use, use a name, name rather than yeah. a pronoun. It, it's, a way, it's, a, it's a way to get around that nonsensical imagined worst case scenario. Yeah. We got a video and I'm not going to play the song because it's uh, the song won't give you the effect of the video. It's a Facebook video. It's great though. 
So I'm going to post it on this episode show notes. This is from Jerry and it is hilarious. It is very funny. It's a Trump video. Check it out. So we got a couple of messages about marijuana, but this one, uh, again, we're, we're going to sort of peter off the conversations about this because we get messages, <laughs> a, lot. a lot of different messages about this. But this one uh, was interesting. This one was sent by a board certified pain physician and uh, talked about a bunch of different things, uh, how it was a, sch- a schedule one drug. And uh, there's a few recent studies that are sort of not really very good. But one thing, I do want to read one line from this. Also, here's another article I ran across stating that alternative cancer therapies will place you at a two-fold chance of dying compared to Western medical care. And this happens to be, um, some of them are, we're talking about marijuana-based and whatnot. So that's very interesting. Yep. Um, Thank you for sending it. Two-fold chance of dying. That's not good. Yeah. That's the opposite. But but again, you know, you kind of kind of expect that. Really yeah, it's does, basically no treatment. Yeah, but you know, it really does sort of say something really good, I think, about cancer treatment and how far we've come, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it's a twofold chance of dying, that means that your chances increase greatly if you start getting real treatment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of cancers have become very treatable. Yeah. We got an awesome video. This is from Jay, and Jay sent this in, and he said that he uh, he really enjoys the show, and he wanted to uh, share this. It's a show um, that is a British show called a Leading Britain's Conversation. And it's a, a guy by the name of James O'Brien who takes calls and someone called in talking about political correctness and he just fucking schools this person, Anthony Magna Bosco style, in just a way that, to ask them questions about what political correctness is and he does not let up. And it's It's because the guy keeps wanting to try. Right. The guy keeps wanting to try to be like, oh, that was just a statement. Let's just let go. And he won't let it go. Nope. No, he does such a nice job of just asking questions. Editorializes once or twice, like you pointed out, once Uh or twice he editorializes a little. But really, at the end of this call, it's one of those moments where you're just like, wow, this guy really knows. I mean, it it was just such a well, well done debate. You should check it out. I'll put it on this week's show notes, a link to this. Um, it's a show. I may actually see if they have a podcast to listen to. It's really, I cool. loved it. He did such it's a such nice a job. job. It's one of the best things I've watched all week. Yeah. Really great. We got a message from Mort and Mort says my hyper Catholic elderly father gets a dozen voicemails like this per, per day. This one is from America needs Fatima. And, uh, and so he sent it to us. He shortened it down. It was over two minutes. So there is some editing here. Hello, this is Robert Ritchie, director of America Needs Fatima and the Foundation for a Christian Civilization, Inc., and I'm calling to invite you to pray a public rosary for America's conversion because we are in a big (laughs) mess and we urgently need Our Lady's intervention to save the nation. And that is why America Needs Fatima is planning 20,000 rosary rallies on October 14th. Can you become a rosary rally captain? Do a rosary rally. Actually, it's pretty simple. It just takes a rosary and a banner and some friends, and you stand in a public place and you pray the rosary. May God bless you. <laughs> what, like, like, uh, what, what in your in your world? Dude, there's a there's there's an intercessory spirit in heaven right. called Mary. Mm-hmm. Who only pays attention when you jingle jewelry? At her. <laughs> she is one <laughs> superficial bitch. I'll tell, I'll tell you what, it's like you just stand like I really need some help. Mm, show me the bling. That is some superficial shit. Yeah, for sure. Man. I can't. I mean, I, I I I can't imagine. Every time lately, we've been hearing people talk about certain things. I start to think about what it would be like with that worldview <laughs> to walk around with that all day. Back, and I'm thinking. Cause I remember one time, so when I was, uh, this was when my, my wife and I were traveling with her parents who happened to be at the time, very Roman Catholic, they wanted to go to church. And so I had nothing to do. We were on vacation. And so we had all, all gone to church together. Right. So we all went to the church on vacation. Yeah, they go on vacation. Yeah, they wow. go. Yeah, so they they were devout enough so that if there was a they don't take a vacation from a, their yeah, church. It was a Saturday. They would go to that place and wow. go to the church. So I wind up going uh, to church with them, and we came in a few minutes. I would say several minutes before, actually, like maybe twenty five minutes before to get a seat, and we came in, and everybody's chanting the rosary, 
And so oh. they joined in to chant the rosary. But I don't know the rosary, so I just sat down. And everybody was kneeling. And they just do this little rosary thing. And it's real weird. Oh, I bet. It's super weird. Because they just say the same words over and over and over and over. And they repeat them over. And the rosary is a is a method in which to pray. So you pray on a, a one type of bead one way. There's a there's a saying and then on another when you reach when you do five of those, there's another separator bead and you say something else on that. So that's what when they say the pray the rosary, each bead has its own prayer and you work your way down it and then different beads have Are there a total prayers. of two prayers? There's two I think two total prayers and so you say one every five times. Basically you say that one five times and then you say the other one, and then you say it five times. I could be misremembering. I think that's how a rosary works, but I'm not sure. I'm not a real. I was a. I was a bad Catholic, so I don't really. Yeah, remember. that's fine. But um, but it's something like that, right? I'm sure we'll get a hundred emails. Telling I know me exactly right? what it was. It really is inconsequential. Right. Okay. But um, but th they they basically worked their way around. But it's fucking weird as fuck. Can you imagine walking down the street and a bunch of people just all saying the same thing? It's like one of us, one of us. One of us. <laughs> so weird. No, 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 no. Leader, <laughs> leader. Uh, <clears throat> so next week in studio, it's our great hope that we'll be joined by Bryce Blankenagle from the Naked Mormon podcast. He's hopefully going to be in Chicago. I think he's going to be making his way up to Mythicist Milwaukee on the weekend. So he's going to swing by, hang out with us, we're going to have him in studio. We're probably going to have him for the whole episode, just chilling and talking yeah. with Bryce. And it should be a lot of fun. So we're, ex we're excited for that. And, uh, and hopefully all that goes through. Um, could just be us next week. Sometimes hey, that happens too. Right? Sometimes that happens too. We're just like, oh yeah. Remember that person who's supposed to be here? They're not, They're not here. here. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes that gets fucked up. So it's our great hope that he'll be here next week. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, but we're going to leave you like we always do with the Skeptic's Creed. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter, mommy issue, hypno Babylon bullshit. Couched in scientician, double bubble, toil and trouble, pseudo quasi alternative, acupunctuating, pressurized, stereogram, pyramidal, free energy, healing, water, downward spiral, brain dead pan, sales pitch, late night info docutainment. Leo Pisces, Cancer Cures, Detox, Reflex, Foot Massage, Death and Towers, Tarot Cars, Psychic Healing, Crystal Balls, Bigfoot, Yeti, Aliens, Churches, Mosques and Synagogues, Temples, Dragons, Giant Worms, Atlantis, Dolphins, Truthers, Birthers, Witches, Wizards, Vaccine Nuts, Shaman Healers, Evangelists, Conspiracy, Double Speak, Stigmata, Nonsense. Expose your signs. Thrust your hands, bloody, evidential, conclusive. Doubt even this. The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information, and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you.